Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, we are going to clearly understand the difference between at controller and at rest controller in Spring Boot. These two annotations might seem similar at first glance, but they serve different purposes, especially in how they handle web responses. We'll walk through the differences side by side. So if you are preparing a Spring Boot backend or building APIs, this breakdown will help you decide when to use which. Let's dive in. Let's start with the main purpose of each annotation. At controller is used in Spring MVC applications where the goal is to return a view, usually an HTML page. It's part of the traditional model view controller architecture where the controller returns a view name and Spring resolves it to a template like a JSP or TimeLeaf file. On the other hand, at rest controller is used when you are building restful APIs. It returns data like JSON or XML directly to the client instead of a view. It's commonly used in backend services, mobile APIs or web apps built with JavaScript frameworks. So at controller is for web pages, at the rest controller is for web services. The biggest practical difference is in the response. With that controller, if you return a string, Spring Boot assumes it's a view name. It tries to render a page using that name. For example, returning home will make Spring look for a home.hml or home.jsp. But with that REST controller, returning a string sends that string as the actual HTTP response body. If you return hello, the user will literally see the word hello in the browser or as part of the API response. So at REST controller tells Spring don't look for a view, just write this to the response body. Let's see the underlying annotations. Add a controller is a direct annotation to create a Spring MVC controller that returns a view. It won't do automatic JSON conversion. On the other hand, at rest controller is a shortcut annotation. Behind the scenes, at rest controller is simply a combination of at controller and at response body. The at response body part tells Spring to automatically serialize the return value into JSON or XML and write it to the HTTP response. So instead of writing at controller on top and at response body on every method, you can just use at rest controller once at the class level. It saves you code and keeps things cleaner. So when should you use each one? Use at controller when you are returning HTML views. This is great for server side rendered pages, admin panels, dashboards, or when you are building with timely JSP or free marker. Use at rest controller when you are exposing data. Think of REST APIs for front-end apps, mobile apps, or microservices that send and receive JSON or XML. So if your front-end is React or Angular, or if you are building API endpoints, you will almost always use at REST controller. Let's compare how they behave with the same return value. If you use at controller and return dashboard, Spring tries to find a view template named dashboard.html. But if you use at REST controller and return dashboard, the response is just plain text. It literally returns the word dashboard as raw output. This small change completely shifts how the app responds to the client. You can mix the two annotations in the same application. For example, your API endpoints can use at REST controller and your admin pages can use at controller. They work together in the same Spring Boot project. It all depends on your specific needs. Just remember, if you are working with views and templates, stick with that controller. If you are returning structured data like JSON, go with that REST controller. To wrap it all up, at controller is for serving web views like HTML pages. It follows the traditional MVC pattern and Spring resolves the view using a template engine. At REST controller is for serving data, mostly in JSON format. It's a shortcut that combines at controller with at response body and it's perfect for APIs and modern web applications. Understanding the difference helps you build cleaner, more efficient Spring Boot applications, whether you are building user interfaces or REST APIs. If you found this helpful, hit like, subscribe to the channel, and comment below with your Spring Boot questions or topics you'd like covered next. Until then, keep learning and keep building.